Live from the John Mayer Room inside the STD Center, it's Cocktails with Heather, starring Heather Diane. Sup? Papaya Sausage Fingers as Joe Spiegel. Your body is a wonderland. And me, Mike Sunderland. <laughs> On today's show, we have uh, Dear Miss Heather. Who the fuck is Heather? I don't know. Oh, oh, shit, that's me. Okay. Heather. Phone sex. Mm. And then some. Our finish of the day is Hybristophilia. Oh, okay. Anger boners. We read from oh. the book of the lubricated aunt, and our drink of the day is the Moscow Mule, because it just sounds funny. That's where you bleed a Russian. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. That is not. Okay. So, Joe. You have another story. Let me pour some wine, but first. But. <laughs> can you hear it? Probably not. All right, go ahead, Joe. Cocktails in. I'm going to wait for that. All right, so here's the thing. Hopefully he doesn't listen to this. Um, I, I've been thinking, so like uh, Joe refers to this as like microphone therapy, and I know that everybody who's listened, if we even have any regular listeners, we do. have heard us basically vomit our emotions out on stuff. So here's something that I don't get. Tell me about your mother. Oh, your mother. Um, Tell us. So you know how most of the time there's like the cliche thing of like people like their personal trainers? Yes. So, okay. So I started up with this gym and I got this personal trainer dude. And I know that my husband was kind of concerned about it at first because he kept going like, who's your personal trainer? Is it a guy that looks like this? Is it a guy that looks like this? I was like, no, no. Does he, he keep putting his like balls this. in your forehead yeah. when, he's, when he's spotting you? I mean, you smell like sex when you come home from the gym. It's really weird. So I, and I'm like, no, like it's not. And I don't go there that often. So here's the thing. It's like. I mean, and we've talked about this before. Is so to get home, I'm dripping wet. Most <laughs> most dudes picture like they see a chick and they try to picture how she would look at the end of their dicks. And I said I always meet a dude and say how would I look on the end of their dick because that's how I think. And so I think about those things, and especially in, like now that I've like had to talk to the guy more often now that I've been going like going there like for a month and a half and like actually working out with him for like a month and a half. He's a pretty stand up dude. He's got a kid. He is obviously married to the job. All he does is just fucking train and, and work out or whatever. So that's kind of a turn off. I don't know. Maybe not for others, but for me, maybe that's the key. Um, he is sarcastic. He's hilarious. So that would be even more of like, hey, that's a, that's a good looking dude. Like there might be some sort of like attraction or something going on. I, I have, is that like your pros and cons list of having an affair? Maybe. No, but it's like. I, Th- here's this the is thing. the picture of what dudes are trying to do. Well, yeah. they, they, okay, so we got like we got the lazy cross-eyed guy over here in the cacti. eye. Um, I should be putting these up on the fucking podcast. S- we should put it up. We absolutely need to. So I, I was like, okay, well, that's like people are attracted to their trainer. So the other day I was like working out and I was like, this is I'm what her watching, trainer looks like. I'm watching him <laughs> a glimpse of Jesus. By no. Reverend Merrill Ted so, Braun. So I'm watching him interact with somebody else that he's dealing with. And you can see that they're like talking to him and they're doing like the little flirty thing. And you got jealous? And no, I was like, what the fuck? Like, I just don't see it. Like, okay, so here's, he's a good looking dude. 100% am not attracted to my personal trainer. Is that what he looks like? I'm not. No, that's, oh my God. What happened to Ricky Skaggs head? It's feathery. It's 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 covering his alien head. Fucking wolf man. He's a cone head. That's bad Photoshop. That is horrific. That's terrible Photoshop. I need to find a picture of my trainer because, like, he's actually a like good. A fucking he's a Chewbacca good looking died dude. on top of his head. He's a good looking dude, and he takes care of himself, and he has got a great work ethic. And I don't even know that he has time to do chicks. <laughs> Dance before the police come. Fuck yeah, you should with your machetes. So it, I, I just don't get it, and I, I'm 100 percent not attracted to this guy. So though. are you like pissed off that so you're not attracted to him? I don't understand. Is this what it. he looks like, like? That should be a given. That should be a gimme. Yeah. Right? He's a personal trainer. Yeah. No, not you know? necessarily. He works out. He's good looking. He's got shit together. He's sarcastic. And, yeah. really, and it's just one of those. And, and this is, I guess, what it goes to my point of there can be people that you're just, that can be good looking and you're just not attracted to them at all. Like, And there's no reason why. He's, not, he's never come at me with bad breath. He hasn't, like, given me a protein fart, you know, walk by. Never um, teabagged you. And never teabagged me. He's. Um, is he, that what he looks like? No, he does not look like Lionel Richie on like crack. Like the barge. That is a that is a cross between Hall and Oates and Lionel Richie. Yes, it is. Is it the Oates? Yes. Oates and Lionel Richie. That's what Almost that is. Looks right like there. a Mexican David Schwimmer. He does look like a Mexican David Schwimmer. How about him? Uh, God no, damn. no, no. I saw that guy in a Yuba County jail once. Um, can he borrow I've another seen feeling? The other side can of the can you borrow another feeling? Can you, what about that guy? 
Until I kissed you, please don't kiss me. Um, Pie in the sky. He, I just don't understand. Like that should be something like everybody like likes their trainer. Everybody has the crush on their trainer. Or every chick wants to get together with the trainer, and I am not repulsed by my trainer. I think he's like an okay guy, but z- I have zero interest to put his penis in me. <laughs> What's up with that? I think because you thought before by going into it that. You thought that oh well it's just going to be natural thing like because it happens to everybody right you believed the, the what do they call it the stigma or the rumors yes and and then you found out that it wasn't true yeah and that and that could be I mean but again I just don't know what it is like I mean there's other people you can be like oh yeah I could I could see myself if I was single being interested in that person and mm-hmm. like I could actually see myself if I was single not giving one red fuck about this guy I've got another idea maybe you actually really love your husband. That could be. <laughs> and so there you go. I don't even know this guy's last name, so I'm just like I'm I'm just looking up randomly like dude's name and like the name of the gym to see if I can find a picture of this guy. <laughs> you mean you didn't take one of him when he was flirting with another Oh uh, holy shit, and I found him based on that. Damn. I think. Stalker. I think don't hold me to that. Yeah, I don't think this is the same guy. Does no, not the same. Does he have a mustache? <laughs> um oh my God. he does have a mustache, <laughs> not quite like that. <laughs> Not quite like that giant mustache. Okay, so here's the thing. is I feel bad as we talk that people can't see what we're seeing. Nor nor do they have an album cover filled with rednecks and black guys called That Butt Thing by the Horace Turan New, or- New Austin Express. That Butt Thing. Uh, I have... Uh, I think these are fake. Mike, I think no, these are I don't fake. Think, uh, Not I think all of them. I think a lot of them are, are real. Uh, I've seen some shitty... <laughs> That's that looks photoshopped. That head looks photoshopped. I don't know. <laughs> Going back to Miami. <laughs> That's a fucking seventies pompadour I've ever seen. That is amazing. That actually I believe might believe is real, by the way. Just FYI. Some of these are real. No, I don't know. So yeah, I, I am not attracted to my trainer and I don't know what's up with that. At good. all. Good. Don't good. think that, I would do him. That's a good thing. Even I, I was single. You don't technically have to be attracted to everyone you interact with. Maybe you're True. not attracted to them because generally you're not attracted to gym people. Gym people. That could be because there was that guy that was working out at the gym. The the fucking the bro malt guy? head. Yeah, rolled up with his energy drink and did like like three cross pumps on the fly machine and yeah. incorrectly yeah, to where incorrectly. it looked painful. And did then he make loud noises? He did. He made very loud noises when he did it. Uh, I got my pump on. Uh, uh, uh. And then, like, took two reps and then, like, grabbed his energy drink. was like, oh, man, and, like, got back on his Get phone. Some. Back on his phone. And he was also trying to make – I had that album, by the way. Um, I know. He was trying to make conversation with my personal trainer. So they knew him. And you could see my personal trainer, like, strained to have a conversation with this guy. And I was working out and did my Heather thing where I didn't realize that I was making the face that I was making. Mm-hmm. And I guess I was looking at the guy like, ah, oh, you fucking piece of shit. And the personal trainer caught me and laughed at me that I was making that face. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. And the other thing is is you may not be attracted to him because you think of him as... uh, The bro guy? Yeah. Well, no, not as a bro guy, but because you guys have a lot in common, apparently. Yeah. Or at least you guys get along well together. So he's not not it, you know? Yeah. Be like dating me. (laughs) I'm going to put you right over here in this brother category. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to put you in the, uh, okay. the fucking story and I should of my preface, life. I should preface 100%. I realize this dude is in no way interested in my fat graying ass. Like I well, you 100%, don't know that. I 100% he might be into... get that. I get it. And I'm not at all saying that he's attracted to me. And I'm just like shunning this dude because I'm hot shit. Like I'm just saying like as a person like seems cool. Don't want to be on a stick. What if he's a chubby chaser? He, I... <sighs> I, uh, you never know. There's a difference between chubby chaser and like somebody who's like you. Rage. You think that that she qualifies as the chubby in the chubby chaser? I'm pretty thing? chubby, dude. She's, she's got some chub. She's I got not chub, fat. man. She's just chubby. No, I got, I got serious chub, man. I got it going on. You know, I look, I don't know. I, I've been technically morbidly obese, so my own for a very long portion of my life. So, so chubby, chubby to me is. So just, Joe did the hair quotes on morbidly obese while I was taking a drink of wine. And that was, I almost put that out. Yeah, because I don't think I look like, like, <laughs> damn, but I, I think that, uh, you know, I, I, I still got a ways to go. But uh, yeah. when I, you know, when I hear, but any, I guess uh, you, you're considered obese if you're 30 pounds overweight. So Yeah, I'm obese. So if you're like, uh, I think it's like 70 pounds overweight or more, you're, you're considered morbidly obese. I'm, I am technically, I think, obese. 
I think a lot of Americans are o- technically obese. Mm, if I they're am. 30 pounds overweight. I am the o- or what, I'm what someone would call, air quote, obese, quote unquote. Yeah, I just. Uh, I get it. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 I'm I don't give a shit what doctors say. I know but. that no matter what I do, this is what genetics has handed me to some extent. So I'm not going to kill myself to be a size four. I mean, I really only think I was only a size four for like a year. You sure? Yes. I mean, you're hanging out with dudes you don't want to bang at a gym. I, I just, I don't want to be like my biological mother that gets winded when she walks from the car to my front door. I don't want to be a, 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 a tired and miserable old person. Yes. I'd rather be an energetic and peppy old person. Uh, good. I mean, I'm still going to be bitter. Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's part and parcel with it, too. So, yeah, that's, that's what I have. I, I find it really weird that... Most people would be at least raise an eyebrow at their personal trainer, and I don't have that going on. Yeah, you're just not attracted to them. Not attracted. To them. I think maybe I just like overweight people, out of shape people. That's kind of my mo. You, you, I mean, I've had a, I've been with a couple of guys that are like super skinny, and I've really liked them. Yeah, aren't but you I never like burly bearded guys? Kind of like mountain, like rough mountain men. Yeah, rough. Like mountain if they men. were gay, they'd be called uh, bears. bears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I do like the bears. Yeah. That's me. I like gay bears. Mm. She's a Berenstein. Okay. I'm a Berenstein bear. I do like that. It's true. <laughs> so you'd be like into an actor like Tyler Labine. And you know what? I think Labine. I think part of what it could be is that even though like he's a personal trainer, like I think I'm more manly than him. You know, Tucker so and Dale. You look like him. Yeah. I, I look like that. Yes. Right. Like I'm I'm probably more redneck and tougher on certain things than he probably is. I wonder what they were thinking when they asked, when they said, we're going to take a picture. Of you and your mullet. Uh, yeah. Chewing on I, weed. I need you to look away from the camera and think about something important. You're just sitting there thinking like, do they have biscuits and gravy this morning? Yeah. Hmm. I shouldn't. Did I, I turn off the oven? I, I don't shouldn't like have, tacos. I shouldn't have thrown out that last worst board I had. <laughs> now I ain't got no shirts. <laughs> do bleach and ammonia go together? <laughs> do I have more Jack Daniels left in the cupboard? Did I feed the last of the corn mash to the chickens? <laughs> Did my mama iron my panties this morning? Is my sister brother around? <laughs> I should have worn a condom does when skull, I had sex with my sister. Does Skull make a king-size can? <laughs> <laughs> if I buy a log of Skull wintergreen, <laughs> is it cheaper than buying the king-size can? Am I going to have to go back to prom with my sister? If I have a can that says shortcut, will women think I have a small pecker? I better go with the long cut. Why is it that my wheelbarrow don't roll good with the quad tires? <laughs> Why well, I get this deep, deep feeling down in my cockles? You know what he's probably thinking? My John Deere ain't running good. I wonder <laughs> if I have to change the spark plugs. I wonder what Shakespeare meant in his fourth sonnet. <laughs> As I was listening to Mozart in D minor, I was wondering what if I transposed it into A... And then added a flutter at the end of the composition. Oh, what a <laughs> what a folly that would be! That would just mess with everybody's mind. Oh. <laughs> Poor guy. So there's a, there's a, a meme on the interwebs which I actually can relate to because this is pretty much my family. It says, "When a guy with a mullet tells me he doesn't give a fuck, I 100 percent believe him." Why is the yeah. guy's name Nappy Brown when he has no fucking hair? Something gonna jump out of the bushes. It's ironic. Unless there's something nappy downstairs, I guess. It's like, ironic. Dude, that looks like a, a fucked up version of Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy. Uh, darkness. So, that's what I have about my personal trainer. <laughs> that guy's got man tits. Yeah, he does. What's our Miss Heather? He's got How about that one? And we've seen that one. Voss Notch. <laughs> <laughs> We just grossed out Carrie. Yes. Tuba. I was looking for that one. I, I had that one up, but there we go. There you go. It's just two nipples. Two. Oh, they're <laughs> lemons. Pierced. Is that Thunder Pussy? Yeah. Thunder Pussy. Actually, oh. a really good fucking band, too. There you go. Vixens of Vinyl. All right, don't all right. All right, all right. Pictures, man. <laughs> yeah, people can't see these. They don't know what we're laughing at. <laughs> Dear Miss Heather. Uh, yeah. ah. uh. My girlfriend and I have a... Have we already done this one? Yeah, dude. Fucking professional. Oh, Get a it. fly swatter. We talked about this. Stupid. Mark Stewart's going to hot glue it. Oh. Uh-huh. Did you write two of the same? Yes. Did you superimpose it? You dumb yes. bastard. All right, so. Uh, 
Well, let's go into phone sex. All right. I look up the Dear Miss Heather. We're gonna we're gonna pause the Dear Miss Heather. So you guys are gonna have to send in your letters because we're gonna need another Dear Miss Heather to replace whatever we have to steal for this next one. You know this isn't live, right? I don't care. <laughs> when <laughs> people are listening to it, they don't know. Well, I know, but no one like right at this moment right now, no one will be able. No, to No, no one's gonna send it in right now, but we're gonna have to steal from next week's to plug into that one. <laughs> so we're gonna be short one the whole time. Yes, and it's gonna be like paddling backwards. Or as if Mike with his finger in the dam, and the cracks opening up on the other side. It's called a dike. Phone sex. Don't you dare talk about anyone like that. Finger in the dike. So phone sex. Yes. I remember when it used to be all over TV late at night. Yeah. And it was the it wasn't even sex, it was the party line. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. everybody call for the party. First minute is ninety nine cents. The nine, After that it's five ninety nine minutes. Yeah. And it's like I don't even know who was on the party line. I think it was just like call waiting, like on steroids. There was always someone that came on there and started hating like crazy. They would just really talk Oh, you a lot called the party line. Oh, they tried it a couple times, yeah. Oh. I mean just, would they just, just make fun of everybody? Yeah, eventually that's what ends up happening. There's someone that just goes on there and starts talking shit, and it causes huge arguments like, oh, I'm North Daniel, motherfucker. Oh, fuck you, I'm Sir Daniel 13, bitch. <coughs> I don't think the gang members were calling the party line. Uh, no, it happened. Seriously. They have way better things to do. Down in Highlands, you know. like Yeah, like, I'm pretty sure all the gang members were fucking calling the party Yeah, line I didn't say all the gang members, fuckhead. I said the, some gang members. You just said gang members. Well, I didn't say all. I'm going to do a judge's ruling if anyone's listening to this. If anybody could... Write us and let us know if they've ever been on a party line. And especially if you're a gang member. Were you interested? I, yeah, I know at that time I would, I would use Moaning Myrtle. Not Moaning Myrtle, I mean... Uh, uh, moaning Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter. Throw it at the head. Um, <laughs> was it Moaning... Uh, or Multiple Mona. That's what, that's what it was, yeah. For, to get the time. At the moon, the time will be six thirty four. Um, it's fucking horrible. We just used to call popcorn. Uh, what kind of fucking house you grew up in? Uh, I like popcorn. Popcorn? Yeah, call them multiple Mona. So, what about phone sex, Michael? God, do you guys actively participate in it? No, I'm, I'm like fucking girl. terrible at it. I've That's done what it. I can tell you. I, no, I, I'm I'm not good, and it's like I'm not good at role play. When I was a teen, I was when I was a, uh, like around nineteen twenty, I was really good at it. No, no, I'm not good at it because I cannot role play because it sounds it uh, f- f- phone play. I can't role play. I'm not yeah. good at it. It seems so fake to me and i'm just not good at it like i cannot fit i'm just like this is stupid like i can text like a motherfucker but like oh you yes. get me fucking to do live or whatever be like so th- th- and then they'll they'll ask like but here's the thing yeah. what are you wearing it'll be like clothes pants. right <laughs> so here's the thing like with the text stuff here's here's why i'm good at the text stuff i can do the text stuff but i'm not actually sexually aroused by the text stuff it's just writing at that point. It's yeah. I'm writing yeah. fiction at that point. Yeah. And I could I'm be, a published author. No, I'm I'm taking a piss. I'm making oatmeal. Mm. Oh yeah, I'm licking your balls. It's kinda like the They got big balls. You know, like the top and bottom in a gay relationship, right? You know, some like to give it, some like to take it. Me, when it comes to the phone sex thing, I'd rather like I don't need to be doing my thing on there. I just I'll I'll just give the advice or not the advice, but I'll I'll do the instructions. Do this, do that. But I don't need to do the, oh, take your junk out and fucking... Well, they do that. Be like, are yeah. you touching yourself? And I just remember, like, oh, yeah. And I'm just, like, in my sweaty ice can't cream. I can yep. myself. Fucking touching myself. Yep. Mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. Eating ice cream. Uh, as like, not at all into it. And yeah. I, okay. So, by the way, this is going to come as, like, a devastating blow probably to my husband. Because in the early days of our, quote-unquote, dating... You know, when we were, you know, me, <laughs> the, ego tender, the tender days before we like met up um, or even like directly thereafter the first intercourse. Um, I think that was something like we used to text that kind of stuff back and forth. And like truly, like I'd be like eating a corn dog yeah. and texting and be like, oh, yeah, I'm so hot right now. <laughs> eating SpaghettiOs. Yeah, eating SpaghettiOs and watching TV, yeah. eating, tr- eating Fruit Loops over the sink. <laughs> I'm like ironing, vacuuming. <laughs> yep, super hot right now. Sitting on the toilet. Yeah, sitting at work, typing a fucking memo. Hey, what are you wearing? Yeah, because at uh, the time when we first got together, he was still working like ten or twelve hour shifts or something like that. But I think he was off at nights. 
But um, he, I think, was very much more into it. Right. And um, at occasion was it was the actual phone call one. But it was like, do you want to do you want to call and listen to me jerk off? And it's like and it's me. So like the first time he proposed it, like we hadn't even met in person yet. Like we'd only like texted like, do you want to call and listen to me jerk off? And I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> because <laughs> it's me so i'm just like Why yeah not? sure sure let's just see what this is about and so like i was i was actually in my car in front of my office the first time like and i had like come back for me like are you where are you are you in your office now like i'm in my car and he's like oh do you want to listen to me jerk off I'm like sure so <laughs> wow, that's like inspiring. he's like okay okay call well i'm sure i said oh hell yeah or fuck i don't know what i said it was i don't remember but i was just like Very but my, it. my like attitude a, the, the text was mm, yeah okay <laughs> you do you boo <laughs> my my response was yes question mark <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> maybe go for broke and he never said like do you want to facetime do you want to skype do you want to watch me whack my dick it wasn't that it was like just you, listen. You, what, so he might not listen? even really been jerking off. He could have been okay, slapping I guess so. a hot dog I, I, or something. He could have. He could have. He just could have been like I don't know, faking. The I'm at the firehouse something. alone. <laughs> no, I you're think not. That just like it it's just. I think just that the fact somebody was there like got him off or whatever. So right. whatever. He could have been basting a chicken in the oven. I there doubt. At the firehouse. Okay, I've seen the man cook. I doubt he was basting any chickens in any oven. He's basting his chicken in was, his own way. Yeah, he was just putting like I don't know Cheddarfield mini smokies into croissant rolls or something <laughs> um so he was he was violently broiling spinach dip <laughs> violently <laughs> broiling spinach dip how do you violently broil i don't know spinach? it just sounded good just it's like, like <laughs> slam it in there it's get like, in there it's like the like you know breeze angrily yeah. like the subtitles so it was like yeah yeah don't eat the hot spinach dip carrie don't ever eat it it's terrible. We have audience tonight, and it's I'm telling violent. them don't don't eat Ryan spinach dip. In so many ways, don't eat Ryan spinach dip. So yeah, it's already been dipped into. It's already been dipped into. But yeah, he'd like really get. And so like I'd call and I'd listen, and like I didn't know what to do. So like I am on this phone call in my car, and but I did not leave it on the Bluetooth. So I had it on the headset, the handset. Because what if somebody walks by? That's weird. So I had it on the headset, and I'm just <laughs> like really I'm quiet, cool. and it's like, and he would just answer, and it'd be like, and it was blank, and I'd be like. Hello? Hello? And he'd go, "Uh uh-huh. And I'm like, okay. (laughs) So we're doing this. All right. (laughs) And so, like, I'm sitting there all, like, on the phone. Uh And I'm, like, uh like, listening to him. And it's, like, it's quiet. And, like, I didn't know what I was supposed to be saying. All you can hear is (laughs) Right. (sighs) Right. And I I didn't know what I was supposed to be doing. So I just sat there quietly and just, like, waited. That's what, wait, that's, see, and that's how I am with the phone sex as well. Like, I just, like, sat there. I'm, like, okay. Like, on the other end, she'd be, like, so uh, I'm doing this. Like, "Uh uh-huh. (laughs) Uh-huh. What are you doing? Listening. Listening to you. Talk. Uh-huh. Okay. About what? What was that? What, was what that, do you want me to say? That Comcast uh, commercial? Do that what yeah. you're Hold, doing. Yeah. Hold it. Uh, did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of like fucking random facts. Did you know that Jack Nicholson made $60 million off the first Batman <laughs> film based on all the back the That doesn't back do analysis? anything for me. Oh, sorry. Uh-oh. Um, Michael Keaton's first movie was <laughs> Mr. Mo- no. no. So in Star Wars... You're not really getting this. I was just—I uh, was bad at it. I'd be like, and he'd be like, "Oh, do you want to hear it?" And I'd be like, "Mm-hmm." Like I didn't even <laughs> use the words. It's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then he'd like finish up, be like, "Okay, are you done?" Like, "Okay, okay, I'm gonna go. Bye." Yeah. <laughs> he'd be like, "If you'd I like to like make a call, hang up and try again." Because we, we actually. If you'd like to make him come, hang up and call again. I had nothing. If you'd like to lick the balls, there was no conversation afterwards. I was just like, "Okay, whatever." And then I would go back to texting because that's that's my yeah that's my comfortable zone. Like I feel comfortable texting. Um, Tell me what you want to do to me. Um, n- nothing. I'm gonna, actually, right now, I'm going to drive you to the store. <laughs> Tell me what you want to do to me. I want you. I want to make you pay for my dinner. Big, big bread. I'm going to get I some want, nachos. I want you to buy me a steak dinner. <laughs> so good. That's hot. <laughs> That's like. That's hot. Look, you know what? What do you? Are tell you me wear? what you like. I like all you can eat shrimp. Are you going to wear a suit and tie? <laughs> Is it going to be made of rubber? <laughs> What like, kind of shoes are you gonna put on with that? Oh you wear gosh, gonna... you wear tennis shoes. You're gonna wear hard you gonna sole. Wear... <laughs> you're gonna wear dress shoes. You wear some slip-ons. Oh yeah, I like that. What Don't if I wear, wear the Crocs? What if I wear a robe, a terry cloth robe, and slippers? Oh, I like it. Terry cloth. Oh, now I'm getting into it. So, Tell me what so kind of soft. steak I'm gonna eat. Okay, so you know what? Actually, if you would have talked about eating steak and we would have had a discussion about what the steak would have been like, I probably would have been a lot more into it. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> just now just talking about out. it, I'm, I want a steak. Yeah. I want a steak right now. Like, that sounds delicious. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I was cooking a steak. Tell me more. Tell me about the steak. Okay. Did someone just Go slower. Steak? So I was, uh, I was basting. Slower. In a marinade. Slower. <laughs> Roasting. So I mean, I, some people obviously very I much on get off grill. on that. So I don't know if it was the audience thing or the connection thing or just that somebody's actually there. I I don't I don't know what the deal was with that. But like for me and people are like, oh, let's have sex. Let's have fun. So they want to talk dirty. And then I had one guy that wanted to FaceTime me while we talked dirty, and I was like, no. Well, yeah, they're, they're because I look really. like shit. I'm worse than this. I'm I feel like, like a in, moron in my giant. Yeah. PJ shirt with men's boxer shorts on. I'm yeah. like, no, I don't. And my dog's next to me. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to face. And the anymore. dog's gonna give you those weird looks. Like, and what the, the fuck are you doing? Like, are you yeah, your dog's gonna bed? judge you. Yeah, dog's like, like you lick your own balls. Yeah, you fuck judging you, Brody. Me. Yeah. I watched you eat a dead rat. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, jerk off. <laughs> fuck you. That's you I, don't I, even I, wipe your own ass. <laughs> but it's not even like they judge you for doing it. It's like they judge you for moving. Yeah. yeah. Why aren't you You're petting me? Bed. If you can fucking do that, why can't you pet you me? You can right pet now? yourself. I'm trying, I'm trying to sleep here, human. Yeah. Throw me a biscuit. How about you just go the fuck to bed? Yeah. Like yeah. I, I, I just make it I too much. I didn't want to do that. It's like I'll, I'll do that in person. Like we can do that in person, but I just, <coughs> but you know, obviously, I, I get that shit. I, yeah, it's. But you know, dudes are dudes, and I'm sure he was whacking it behind the tool shed every day at some point. So to each his own, man. If you like hearing that shit, and then you can get off on it. Go I mean, all right. and and here's the thing: is like I'm pretty sure that like I was his go-to for that because I'm sure there's a lot of chicks that he was talking to that'd be like, no, or like he maybe he didn't feel comfortable because you know how. I oh, put, you were the keeper. You know how I put people at ease anyway, so maybe he felt comfortable yeah. asking to do that, or maybe I was available. You got Louis C.K. But. <laughs> that was that maybe I got Louis C.K. That's okay too. He felt so comfortable around you. He's gonna yeah, whip his just dick felt out. Yeah, I, I, actually, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised. I, I, people, you, you could be fucking. Do that. You'd be dressed up, not even dressed up. You just fucking, you know, not shower for three days, washing dishes. Yeah. Just he's just behind you. Yeah. Just whacking it. Don't look at me. And I'm sure that was part of it. And too, don't you and judge it, me. it could be just because, like, I'm just like, I don't care. Like, I don't have anything better to do. Yeah. So, like, we're, we're like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is that going to get you off? Yeah, sure. I'll sit on the phone. And then by, like, I don't know, the third or fourth time, I knew I didn't have to say anything. So I just sat there See, and listened and be like, that right mm-hmm. there. If, 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 she, if, as uh-huh. she's working on some important document. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If she's not into it, I wouldn't be into it. Then, like, uh, you know and what I mean? It's, furthermore, it's, when we come to a discussion with you on fees, and I'm going, mm-hmm, 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 yep, yep. Oh, baby, oh, yep. baby. Mm-hmm. Sounds good. Yep. It's the the Rocco's Modern Life uh, phone sex line. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh baby. Oh, oh baby. baby. Oh baby. Like don't I stop. I just I I think Please. of that and there was some movie and I don't remember what it was what movie it was but it had like where somebody called a phone sex line and it was like a fat lady smoking a cigarette ironing yeah. and had like two shit kids underneath the ironing board. Oh, it was an Aerosmith. Uh, was it? And she's yeah. like, oh, yeah, da, 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 da. Like, really hot talk, and she's this fat, yeah. ugly, nasty bitch. I believe that was an Aerosmith song. In a trailer. So awesome. Because you know that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. You just they have to have the voice. Deep, smoky voice. Yeah, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it sounds like this. Oh, you both taste so good. It may be sweet. Emo- <laughs> I think it's sweet emotion. <laughs> it Put is it all emotion. over my face. Not your jizz, the whipped cream. <laughs> God. Chubby girl masturbating, what? smoking a cigarette. What? No. No, you've gone too far. This sweet you went into the dark web, Mike. The forbidden area. Now we're going to have to watch Sweet Emotion to see if that's... It's at the end of it. It's real easy. Is it when they hang up from it? Yeah. Oh, she's in the trailer. Anyways, that's what I imagine. But I'm sure there are people that have. So here's here's here was my... Here's where I was going with that cool story. Is if he's going to call somebody that he's only known for a few days yeah after talking to them from meeting them on tinder i'm imagining that he would be the kind of guy that call the phone sex line yeah to hear the chicks and beat off on the phone oh uh, i i thought you know the, the 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 pinnacle of the story was did he finish oh i'm sure he did i mean i didn't <laughs> ask for proof like I don't even know how you. Well, would prove that. usually a guy makes a certain grunt or something that lets you. I mean, know it that sounded he like it, but I don't. <laughs> but I mean, I think actually. You know what the cool thing about the sex thing is? Because is I'm that so on the phone, smooth. Because I'm so smooth, I probably yeah. asked, "Are you done?" You don't have to worry about cleanup if you do it over the phone. That's true. That's true. That's his well, problem. Yeah, I mean, you do. But You're not there to help him. It's clean not, up. Well, it's not my problem. Yeah. yeah. 
No. No. I was just sitting in my car. Yeah, here it is. So it's not my problem. Oh, yeah, because they do the hotline. That's right. And he's envisioning what the chick looks like. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> That's a pretty good goddamn video. Yep. Oh, look, Wayne and Garth in the background. I didn't even notice that. Well, now you know. <clears throat> All right. So the question of the day will be, how can I make solo sex just as fun as partner sex and change it up, Miss Heather? I have a few vibrators and always want more, like I've had my eyes on those clit-sucking vibrators. Use a mirror. I really want to make sure it isn't dull and I'm looking to try something new. Any advice? I've never <laughs> been able to make solo sex as good as partner sex. Okay. Anyone else? You? Yeah, I mean, you know. It, <laughs> I mean, would you talking to two guys that have up until recently? Yeah, I mean, I was technically single for. I was technically single when I was married, so. Right. Okay. So, is is using your hand? Is there any way you can replicate partner no, sex? No. No. Dolls, uh, flashlights. I never um, tried those. Um, <laughs> anything. A gold <laughs> flashlight hidden on the top. You of You know, your if I did, closet. I'd tell you because I'm fucking honest about everything. Maybe. So. Just saying. <laughs> no I, it, It's best with another person Pancreatic Alec I'll take things found in my brother's closet For $600 <laughs> You know I was wondering When that subject was going to get breached We already talked about it before On a previous show uh, We have? Yeah. yeah I think I told the story Episode number two Part th- point three. Yeah. I don't know But uh, again Yeah I'll we have still, to I'll yeah. still take what was found in my brother's closet For 600 on that Yeah Behind the and doilies. Did you call me or did you text me? I think I texted the picture to you. You did. You're like, look what the look. You will not believe what I found. You're like <laughs> what? What did you find? Did you? It was it money? What did, did you find? Fucking gold a, bullions. A leprechaun. What? <laughs> no. I found the a D- fucking flashlight. A winning lottery ticket. <laughs> and and you, you texted me and I went and my mouth literally dropped open. I went. Oh. <gasps> uh. And, okay, so and, and I had like four responses. I was just like, for those of us playing at home, this is does, so not our brother. By d- the way, does Laura know? Erase. What? What? <laughs> oh what are you going to do with it? Erase. erase. Save it. Erase. erase. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the worst no part of fucking it way <laughs> is his wife was with me when we found it because we both pulled it out. She found it. And pulled it out and was like, what's this? And I'm like, I don't know. And so we're like looking at it because I had the cap on the mouth thing. And so I'm like, well, I don't know. It's really weird. It's like plastic. It's something. Like a lens like, cover on a and camera? Then it, yeah. And then <laughs> it read on it flashlight and on the end. And I was like, oh, my God. And so I popped the cover off. And then You didn't was the like instantly thing. drop it from your hand or anything? I think like, I was uh. just in shock. No, it's me. So I think I smelled it first because it's me. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Like a, oh, no. Okay, it just like smells like fart. rubber. You don't want to smell the fart, but you still smell the fart. It's my right? Asperger's, man. I smell like, fucking yeah. everything. I can't help it. Pick, like, oh, my pick God. Your pick uh, someone else's ear. Here, smell yes, this. Okay. okay. No. <laughs> it's not even like when somebody goes here, smell this. Usually I go, no. But if it's something like before I, I drink out of it or eat or anything. It's Does like, this smell right to you? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. I just. I knew, like, I knew oh people like that. It would be like, oh God, be sitting there. Oh, my God. It would be just something rancid, and I'd save it. On yeah. purpose, because yeah. they knew that the smell person... Smell this! Be like, does this smell right to you? And you have to fuck... You and have they to, smell You it. literally have to sell it, like... Yeah, like... I don't know, I'm, I've been I'm drinking really this all sure. day. It's a little uh, off. And then they smell it, like, oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't. You shouldn't have smelled that. What are you doing? No, I don't I don't know. You told me to! <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I smelled the flashlight, but I smelled the flashlight. It just smelled like, like, rubber. It didn't smell like anything weird. Might it smell like he shit in it or anything. But what if somebody... See, now, part of me thinks, what what... What if somebody gave that to him as a joke? That's yeah. what we think, actually. Because it was like hidden away. And... Because well, and that's he probably like I don't I don't well that's what we actually tossed around because it was him. He would have like called us or or told his wife like oh my god you wouldn't believe what I found or even if he bought it dude I bought a flashlight because right. we're just retarded like that and it wasn't it was hidden in the back of the closet yeah. No. Yeah, there's there, it's not like sex toy was a taboo issue in the yeah, house. Yeah, that's, that's we've all talked about it for years. It was not an issue, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It just like popped, literally popped out. Of and the that's door. and that's my guess is that if because I mean, look, I mean, maybe mo- he we're, had we're a pretty open family, but well, I think if maybe it was he, hidden away, someone must have given it to him. I, I'm thinking and, he just was trying to hide it from the kids. And he just threw it up in the closet and didn't even think about it again. Yeah, and got drunk and forgot about it. Or it was got old. high and wandered away. Yeah, like that's what happened. 
So I, I don't, I don't know. But the funny thing was, is I, at, right after I had texted you about it, I wish that I hadn't because I wanted to wrap it then in one of the boxes of shit that I brought you home to you. And I just, I didn't, because I, it would have surprised just so, the shit out of me still. I, I was oh. just like, what? Like, and so I had to text you, but uh, of course I should have saved it and made it more interesting. And then I could have re-gifted you it You should have poured tuna right. juice on it. Yeah. So it stunk. Oh, she sells the picture. I don't have the picture anymore. You'd have wrapped it up for him, and he opens it up, no, and this tuna stink hits no, him in the face. No, that's see, that's not mm. funny. That it's, would gross you out. No, That'd be hilarious. It's, it's not. It's no, not but funny. then it wouldn't be as funny. Why would that not be funny? Because I would have thrown it at somebody. I should have saved it and gave it to it's you. It's not. For the it's it's funnier if you just present it as the gift, and then present it, and then I can re-gift it to you, and then it just carries threw, on down the line. Away. You can re-gift it to your kids, and then they we can re-gift it to. I I threw it away to the homeless guy that tried to break into your fucking house. You know, I could have sent that to my cousin. There you go. See, it would have been a great re-gift with tuna juice on it. Yeah, no, I'll see. I found it. I didn't find the picture. You have the picture. I have the text string with Mike. Yeah. I said, "Oh my god, I forgot to tell you. Laura and I were cleaning the top of the bathroom closet, and she found a fucking flashlight. Not kidding. Yep. We couldn't figure out what it was at first. No idea what it was doing up there. Laura couldn't wouldn't have cared if we had it. We laughed so hard. I almost put it in a box for you to find. It was gold too. Yeah, it was gold. <laughs> which, which it was. <laughs> Which is not something Mark would buy. No, no. I like. So that's what it means. It had to be someone so that gave which, it to him. Which flashlight would you like? Ooh, definitely the metallic colored one. Yeah. Absolutely. The, Hands down. The Jewish. What? So like, the, it's the like. The Jewish what, American what, princess foot color. What? What? Shoe what, color. What would the what village people buy? The gold. I'll have the gold one. Yeah. It's a gold member. It's the gold member. <laughs> I love no shit. Gold. I love gold. That one all comes together. I oh, that one's gold. a keeper. Yeah. I love gold. It was in a horrible smelting accident. <laughs> okay, so uh, okay, what are we talking about? Sex toys? Yeah, um, well, we were. Yes. So uh, there's nothing that can really replicate the experience. But here's what I can tell you. There is a thing called the magic butterfly. Roll with me here. It doesn't it doesn't work as well as you think it should. But it has two little it has like little strappy things. <laughs> Fucking Laura in the background. One strappy, oh yeah. One little strappy each goes around their legs, like you step into it. Yeah. And then a strappy goes around it's your like waist a, to kinda it's hold like it a in strap place. On. Sort of. But it's your personal strap on. Right. You strap it on yourself. I am quite aware of this device this okay. phenomenal. But it's got a little device. it's got okay. a little chubby dick thing. It's like maybe two inches of fury. Like a and mega clit? Maybe, but it looks like a butterfly, so it kind of wraps around you a little bit. But it has a little dick thing, goes in, bloop, and then it's it just it's it just got attaches like a, to the clip. It's got one of those little magic bullet things in it, uh-huh. basically. And it's I think the one I used to have was wired. Um, but what it is is you can put it on and use it without having to hold it on with your hand because right. as soon as the vibration goes through your hand, so you can go grocery like everything's shopping. fucking lost. <laughs> I want to go grocery shopping with it. But it puts a little something inside and then still has a stimulation <laughs> everywhere else. So, like, it can take a while. Like, you might have to, like, move around or kind of try and hold it or maybe put a pillow in between your legs or something. But you can kind of replicate that without having to actually have your hand on it. Right. And I guess maybe you could do the same. I've seen suction cup ones before. But just the in and out isn't necessarily going to do it for a chick. So, I mean, you can suction cup a dildo to the bottom of your tub all you want. I don't care how fucking waterproof it is. It's just going in and out. It also I mean, keeps the water from draining if you do it, it right. If you suction in the right spot. Yes, yes absolutely. Or you could suction it to the side of the tub, maybe, and you could just back up on it. Yeah. Beep, 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 Mom, beep. what's that noise? Nothing. Beep, Nothing. beep, 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 beep. Especially when they're Swizzle stick. morbidly <laughs> obese. Yes. It beeps a little bit. Huh. It beeps a little bit when you go back. So, I, I mean, you can have all the sex toys you want. They all serve different purposes, and they're going to all do different things. But I would say definitely look for something that you can strap onto yourself without having to hold down. And that's going to be your closest bet. The weirdest the weirdest sex objects. I think the, I think the licking one, like if you still have to hold it, that's, that's still going to be. No, this is the, let's see. I like that you still have a cocky up. Underwear, yeah. Thank you. Well, I never got rid Double of it. Double dildo underwear. Yes. Does that mean there's one on the outside of it, too? No. See, there it is right there. Oh, okay. So you put it on. Oh, one, one, and one goes, goes in and one goes out? One oh, goes one in, in the butt? butt. One goes in, yeah, one in the pink, <laughs> one in the stink. It's a shocker. Shocker underwear. Yeah. <laughs> then you got that, which is just... <laughs> what the it's fuck? Gotta have, it's got to have clit stimulation. <laughs> it's got to have clit stimulation. It's not going to work. 
Well, I mean, it could worry. I guess that would be the same yeah, as having plug. a partner when it just goes in and out and yeah. doesn't do fucking much else. But butt unless plug. you have clit stimulation, it's not even fucking interesting. Yeah. Dude, I'm actually interested in that. Yo, so, okay, so <laughs> that? here's the thing. No. Guess what she, someone's getting for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> we'll got, see they have got my shopping for Ryan's so Santa. this is this is more along the lines of you know <laughs> I'd be interested Gotta to try that and see what it is, but I need somebody that wants me to penetrate them with a strap on I don't I don't think I'm gonna have any takers in my house oh, wrong wrong spelling what the f- okay Vic subs <laughs> I was looking up something else what, what? have you ever heard of a fieldo N- no okay well there's the picture right there a fieldo is a not is a strapless dildo Okay. Which you insert in one, and then you have a dick. Now you have a dick sticking out. Look, you can even see my fat hand in this picture holding it. Yeah, we should have regifted that. Mike is examining it. You can see my fat hand in it. <coughs> <coughs> I'm glad it looks clean. So, anyways, that's what a field though is. So, but I don't, un- I don't understand still. Yeah. Like, how's it staying in place? You insert it. Into but how's it? What if so it chicks can either bang dudes or or well, other there, chicks. Oh my God! What's the two dude thing? What's the, what's no, that? What's that? What's that? That's a chick and a dude. Make it bigger! Make it bigger! Make it bigger! Make it bigger! That's a chick and a dude. I don't think so. That's a chick and a dude. That's a chick and a dude. See? Oh really? Yeah. I think that's two dudes. No. no, that's a chick and a dude. How do you know it's a chick? Because she's got Kim ass. No ball sack. Yeah, there's out. no balls. Look, well, it's tucked in. No, it's in the butt. That thing's in the butt. No, it's two butts. That's the butt. You would see the balls going around the si- edges of the. Yeah, you know, it's just not there. Yeah, that's that's. See, this is a little bit more sexy, in my opinion. Yeah, but yeah. see, but you can't really tell. See, what is that? That's, that's the field though, and then it, there's the whatever, and then there's. It's the probably like an air release Did pressure someone, hole. Yeah. Well, oh. That's that's um. It helps with queefing. <laughs> it's a vibrator. Oh okay. So that's where you put the Battery vibrating insert, bullet. Yeah. So they do that, and then it's it's like. I just like that they're mostly purple. That is kind of interesting, or bright blue. Yeah, I don't care for the blue. I love blue, but I don't care for the blue. Okay, so one. you stick it in you, and then now you have a dick, and then you can fuck other girls or yeah. guys. or dudes. You know or I mean? dudes. Yeah, why discriminate? Right? Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I guess you'd have dick to have very strong uh, pelvic muscles to hold that in. Yeah, yeah. you'd have to be practice. Practice yeah, your kegels, kegels. Have to be. or you got to lie down. Okay. Oh, someone tied it to their hand. So there's that. Yeah, there you go. You also uh, fa- you a, face it the other and way. And they're also uh, part of the the and gang. You the ass bloods. The ass. That was part of the gang, the Bloods. Oh too. yeah, that's that's the initiation for that's, being a crip. Yeah, oh, it's or um, blood. That's bad. That's like we're gonna fuck you that's up. That's a bloody field, though. And it's and it's on their hand. Come like, on, that fuck red you one up. man looks like Satan's cack. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Satan has Satan. three. Cocks. I'm sorry, but I gotta put that right all in connected. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So yeah. Anyways, that's what these are. See. Okay. And then you can do a guy in the butt. <laughs> in the butt. In the butt. We're here to inspect the prostate. Yeah. That's just uh, okay. That's too much for me. Ugh. Okay. That's enough, dude. Butt stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not against it, but there's just. <laughs> there, there I'm was not a, saying I'm there, against it. There was there was a picture. There are you buying? Like, I really didn't fucking need that one. <laughs> was, th- was it the Harry one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. that threw yeah. it over the just, edge. Yeah. Okay. That was enough for me. Okay. So no hairy asses for you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Not yeah. into the bear thing. No. Okay, fair enough. No. So that's... So that's one that's, thing. That's, that's something So Miss Heather Ryder, the fieldo, yeah, I is mean, an if, option if for you as well. If you're going to use a uh, an object, you could do that, and then... But you, uh, you, you st- it's still got to have the feels, I guess. Yeah. I don't I really know. feel it, though. Yeah, the dildos Stop. never feel quite the same. Okay. Hybristophilia. Hybristophilia. Is a paraphilia in which sexual arousal, facilitation, and attainment of orgasm are responsive to and contingent upon being with a partner known to have committed an outrage. Committed an outrage. Cheating. Lying. Known infidelities or crimes such as rape, murder, or armed robbery. So like the people that like the serial killers? Yeah. Ah. Auto ass ass and a phobia. <laughs> Cinephilia. So anger hard on is what you said. Autasinophilia. So like you're mad. Like, well, see, there's like where you Autas- get mad at somebody and you fight and then you have like. Two asses. You have like fight angry sex. But yeah. that's not that. Well, right? it could be. Uh, uh, oh, the Bonnie and Clyde syndrome. Yeah. Okay. The term is derived from the Greek word. You're turned on by a criminal, like just. To commit an outrage against someone, so it doesn't ma- like like I see the worst you shit that they've done. The more an turn on me. it is. You sir, 
Sir. What is it? It is an outrage. I need to know what this is. Money giver is a paraphilia whereby sexual arousal is obtained by being robbed or being held up or being charged for sexual services. Crematistophilia. So, like, if you're in a bank that's being robbed, you're turned on. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to fuck the you dude that's doing it. You get a chromatistophilia boner. Don't, don't, just, you know, like a fear boner. Okay. Like when you're asked to do algebra? Yeah. Yeah, it's like the rape fetish videos. Algebra boner. Or like the burglar, algebra the burglar boner. videos that they have. Okay. You know, where your husband dressed up like a fucking <laughs> robber, comes in through the window, puts the fake knife to your neck. And, I'd be and mad. He'd probably like shit. break the window and I'd be like, that was the fucking screen. God damn it. Yo, now we have to buy a new one. Take the reseal that. Have any of you actually, Joe? Hello. You would be the most prime suspect for this one. I'd be into people that are rapists. Yes. Cheating, lying, known infidelities, <laughs> or crimes such as rape, murder, or armed robbery. So if a chick raped a guy with a field dough, I'd be turned on by her. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Or maybe okay. Right in an outrage like infidelity. I'm going to go and read this again <laughs> because. One Obviously, more time for the people you're in the not back. understanding. No, I'm not understanding. Attainment of orgasm, in t- responsive to and contingent upon being with a partner known to have committed an outrage, cheating, lying, lying. known no infidelities, infidelities, or crimes such as any crime. Um. When I, you know, one of the things I was, when I was married, when I was trying to make things work um, and knowing that she had cheated on me, um, I think there was a, a few, t- a couple times where I tried to like get like a kinky urge out of it, you know, like a fetish thing out of it. Like, oh yeah, you know. Well, that they, would be this. I, 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 yeah, I think I did try but, that a couple times. Yeah. But my question is, is maybe she was more into it than you were. But you know he what didn't commit any crimes. No, no. But she was with. Oh, other. with questionable people right oh yeah so she was it, banging her drug dealer so yeah i mean well i mean that's that's, so that's not that that's just you want free drugs right but that's I mean, still sexual well, she also arousal. said oh he had an eight inch cock that was also i wanted that too that's what she said she told me so yeah well then whatever she's a size queen <laughs> so she got the meth and she got the eight inch cock I so she was that. happy well she got think. she she also got off on the fact that it w- <laughs> she was cheating and then lying to you you know, among oh, other some things. She said that, that, you know, one of the things she said was, um, she goes, I never cheated on you before we were married, but afterwards it felt like a player's uh, paradise or some shit like that. It's like Richard Simmons at a, <laughs> it, it, in prison? Yes. I guess, yeah. It's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, Play on. I mean, I know people that get off on... <laughs> it would be summer camp to him. I know people that get off on doing that to their partners. Doing the... Su- I mean, you know, uh, like I guess it would be like the whole, oh, this is so wrong, but it feels so good kind of thing. Well, yeah, but I mean, she, she even fucking admitted it. I yeah, never I did it before really we were married, like, but I, you know, yeah. which I call bullshit this, on that because I'm pretty sure she did. This is like taking the I like bad boys to a new well, level. Well, you did too, but oh, I had uh, to sow my wild no, oats. No, <laughs> no judging. <laughs> no judging. No judgment. Sort of trailer orgy. Yeah. No judgments here. Sort of trailer orgy. Sort of trailer. <laughs> it's like it's like the bad boy thing to a new level. Uh, damn it. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. It's like just. I mean, it's not even like, oh, they're they they're a little bit of a rebel. This is like, this guy stabbed somebody. That turns me on. Yeah, that I, <laughs> mm, I like mm, it when people mm, kill. That's like mm. the ultimate bad boy fetish right there. I think is. Yeah. You know, it's not like, oh, he just, you know, he he doesn't like cops and cops don't like him. Yeah. Instead, it's more like, oh, damn. He he rolls his cigarettes up in his sleeve. He drove over 10 children that came out of the kindergarten. So naughty. He looks like a 50s biker guy Ooh. with his black T-shirt. He tore the tag off his mattress. His name is (laughs) Fonzie. So into him. Arthur Fonzarelli. He mislabeled his outgoing mail. <laughs> <laughs> Tore the tag off his mail. Such a rebel. <laughs> so excited. He wears his hat <laughs> sideways. He parks in handicapped spaces, and he's I, not even handicapped. I do that, and I don't have a following. That's because you're not cool. You know what else I park in? The to-go order spots. That's right. I eat in the restaurant, but I park Because there. there's probably not time for them to get a tow truck out there anyway, right? <laughs> totally. If yet. you just start looking for flashing lights and once if you it, see them, you get the fuck out of it. If it's a spot that says reserved for expectant mothers, I park there too because I expect shit. <laughs> I'm still expecting. I'm a fucking mother. Yeah. Right? All right. Yeah, motherfucker. All right. 
Huh. I also park in the veteran spots because my husband's a veteran. What, what do you What do you they do? They don't say veteran I'm not of anything. I'm pregnant. Well, you're parking in the expectant mother spot. Hey, I Walmart, have expectations. They have those, ele- have, they have those have electric mother, car spots. And I have expectations, spots. God damn it. And yeah, people keep parking their Camaros and shit in those spots. I also park in the veteran spot because they don't say veterans of what. I, I park in those spots that say 30 minutes for this place only and then mm-hmm. go to another place. Mm-hmm. I do that too. Because I'm a rebel, Dottie. That's right. I'm a I also park in all the clean air vehicle spots. I like to park in compact spots. Those are the ones I was talking I park about. in all those things. That's my biggest pet peeve is people with SUVs that park in compact spots. I do that. Where the trees are. Like, Sometimes. Like, I it, depends, it depends on what I'm in. I say, I'm a compact SUV. Yeah. I'm compact. I'm compact. Yeah. Or, um, like I said, the clean air vehicles, the carpool ones. I love those. Cause that's the really carpool paid. ones are the You're best. You're compact when someone's folding you into a chair. I have, I have like four chair. kids. It's a carpool. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, I don't know about anybody else. <coughs> yeah, I park in all those fucking spots. <sighs> See, veteran, I, I, veterans I like to, of what? I'm a veteran. Of I like war. to add my step counter, so I park far away. I'm a veteran of giving birth. I'm a I'm a veteran of work. I have lived through many things. I have PTSD. That's just not from <laughs> war. Good night. Adios. Did you know that a person that does asphyxophobia is also called a gasper? What's what's that? Is that when you choke? Yeah, when you yeah. hang yourself. You know, like no. uh, like why why are they uh, gasper? Like ghetto gaggers. Have you ever seen that? No. What? <laughs> you look what? like ghetto gaggers. I'm not talking about choking somebody with your cock. I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so can I just can I just <laughs> I, I need I need to interject it's, here. It's done when the, the act is done by a person to him or we herself. We need to make a note. For one of one of the follow up shows is that whatever wine I'm drinking mixed with my mucus from my cold last week kind of has an a semen aftertaste. Okay, well we're going to do that one here soon, so that would be this this week. You know what? I yes. think the only criminal that I could think of that I might be turned on with um, might be those. God, this sounds so bad. Those fucking uh, hot teachers that bang their 15 year old students. I that. I've seen some hot ones. I'm like, God damn, that'd be fucking hot to hit. But not because she did it with the kid. It's just because she looked hot. That's it. It's mostly, uh, anyways, this fetish it's is. because you're hot for teacher. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I brought my pencil. Is uh, mostly for serial killers. But yeah. who would be attracted to this guy? Dennis Rader. No, Mr. He's, Rader. Yeah, the BTK. Is he the? Oh, yes. yeah. yeah, he is very ugly. And that yeah. was. Uh, He's got quite the cul-de-sac. He had the mustache, man. Look at this. Yeah, Wichita. Yeah. He's got an amazing cul-de-sac. Wichita. He's uh, wow. He looks like a, a pastor at a church. He that was. He was at a church. Yeah. Mm. Okay, that mm. makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, he looks like the pastor that's really concerned that everyone has the right passage for Bible study. Oh yeah. That's that guy's ugly. He was in. The, he worked in the meat department of a leaker's IGA supermarket. Did he have a complete rubber suit with a polo shirt? Probably two of them. <clears throat> so gross. He had two kids. Uh, and then he worked as an assembler for the Coleman Company. I wonder how much her fucking counseling they had to go through or her still may be going through once they found out about him. I guess it just depends on the person because like, if somebody came to me and was like, so your father's a serial killer, I'd have been like, oh, so many more things to make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I... I think I could. I'm like, okay, cool. So, do you have him? I, I dope. I'll be by on visiting day. Life is weird, isn't it? <laughs> that's just. <laughs> well, that's some shit. Okay, have a great day. Whoops. I, I, yeah, I don't <laughs> think I'd have that. Oh, I'm devastated. I'd yeah, be like, no. that was, was like, fucked up. You know what? I'm not killing. Thank anybody. God I didn't get fucked up <laughs> from it. I'd be like, am I in trouble? No. Okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll take his pictures down. We yeah. have a neck on that. <laughs> Paul Dennis Reed. Look at that guy's neck. Yeah. What? I guess the original thick neck. How what do you do to get a neck like that? Uh, headbang. Yeah, you do net, um, neck exercises. He was known as a fast food killer. Did he kill fast food? Killed people eating fast food. How do you feel about Popeye's chicken? Uh, I'm sorry. I just had a Harry Carey moment there. Uh, it's probably better than Kentucky Fried Chicken, <laughs> but it's not as good as Turkey Chicken. Captain You're D's. right. That man is a serial killer. How do you feel about Popeye's chicken? <laughs> I like it. Actually, I didn't like it when it was up here. Yeah. I didn't like it at all. And our brother said that I had to go to the hood to eat it. Yes. And I just avoided it because I thought it was just shitty and he was full of crap. And then I had it down in Roseville recently and it was really good. Yeah. Church's chicken is better. I don't know where the closest church's chicken is. God. We used to have one. Florin. Right by where I live now. Hmm. I'm going to go check that out. Florin or? F- yeah, Florin. You ever had Pioneer Southside. chicken? Field trip. Yes. 
There used that's to be another one that's really good. Yeah, there used to be one in North Highlands, and I, I used to go to that one all the time. That Field was, trip. God, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, I gotta Field go down. trip. I got to go down there. How do you... Would you eat the Popeye's chicken? <laughs> yes. It's a yes or no question. Yeah. Mark and I used to go there all the time when I would go visit them. There's yeah. A, there was a Popeye's off of uh, Harding. Dude, yeah. I, I never had red beans and rice before, and then I had theirs, and it was fucking great. Yeah, it's supposed to be really good. Because we're all getting hungry, because we're all drunk. <laughs> Mine's better. Red beans and rice? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had the Zatarans before. Zatarans. That was a long time ago, though. Cause no, I, I, I had to hand make it a few times. And I don't buy that box shit anymore. It took it like a while. Like First it was too runny, and then it, I got the right consistency down. How does anyone become attracted to a fucking serial killer? I don't know. It's um, the celebrity of it, I think, t- is one of, the, one of the reasons. I think the celebrity. Because you're being connected to something that people know. You know, so in a way, it, you're like um, vicariously living famous. Which you're, I hate to burst their bubbles, but them. I know a lot of these serial killers have like have gotten married inside. I think. Um, oh yeah, a lot of them. Fuck uh, yeah. Charles Manson yeah. is married now, Was. and he got married inside. Um, or Ted Bundy. He, he kind of dead now. Oh. He did. Yeah, he died like less yeah, than whatever. a year ago. Well, whatever. So, yeah. anyways. But yeah, you, anyways. So with that, like, I still have no, so like, I know who he is. So if they're trying to follow the fame or the fame piece of it, I have no idea who these bitches are. Like, unless I've, and I'm sure I've watched a documentary on them because I'm a creep, Mm -hmm. but I still don't retain who they are or anything about them. So they have no fame. They're just married to a guy in jail that like killed a bunch of people. Yeah. It's because they're still connected to it in their minds. They're, they're, you know, they're a part of, you know, whatever the infamy or the fame or whatever you want to call it. It. Make your own fame, bitches. Insecurity and the willingness to have their sense of self determined by the men that they were involved with it has nothing to do with celebrity. I think it's, I'm sure some of it does, but it's the insecurity. So it's like another BD, BD something. Like the like where you're, um, it's like a domination thing, but right. different. Yeah. Like when you're the little. To the big. Well, hey, that would be the ultimate. Um, I could fix him. <laughs> you know, <laughs> true. You know, he killed and raped thirty people. I, I could, I could, I could, I could change him. I, I could change. Bad men are often man. romanticized, tragically flawed, but human, dark and sinister, but exciting. As long as antiheroes are seen as attractive, bad men will be too. I can save him. It's often less a matter of being attracted to exclusively bad men and more the crumbs of goodness they offer. Attention when no one else is giving it. Plush kittens, boxes of chocolates. Moonlit drives, intelligent conversations. It's harder to see the bad. Moonlit drives, the body in the trunk. Yeah. I know the man and he's capable of becoming. Yeah. And no one else can see except for me. Yes, exactly. That sounds fucked up. That's fucking scary. It's like, like, bitch, you knew I was a rattlesnake. (laughs) Well, and I mean, I I mean, I know that the the chicks that do that and, uh, you know, I can't say that I've never been one of them. You know, you see, you know, like, <laughs> how cool this person can be if they would just fucking get their shit together. They just can't. But, yeah, that's that's taking it to a whole new level. Yeah, that's, that's just... Yeah, and the self-delusion that those people have. Because I've watched, you know, documentaries <laughs> like Making a Murderer and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And the people that, that are with them, they a lot of them convince themselves that the person they're with is innocent, you know? And that, oh, yeah, just everything's, you know, but... Yeah, there, there's any. They'll come up with anything to to fit their narrative. Okay, so moving on from there, mm-hmm. Heather mm-hmm. has a new wine to taste to test. Oh, oh, I do. Do we want to talk about the one that tastes like semen? Yes. Okay. Ew. Gonna, I'm never going to get to the first one. So this is the one I'm drinking tonight. So I just started writing about this. So this one is also again, as we have discussed, we should probably like re- refresh this every show just yes. so they know. Um, I have decided to take on for you. Bearing the burden, doing God's work, <laughs> if you will, um, of tasting grocery outlet wines. Um, the store grocery outlet, which is discount groceries and things, um, have a lot of booze and sometimes at very low prices. And is it worth it? That's the question. I drink it so you don't have to, or as we call it. Poor decisions. Poor decisions. So tonight, actually, I'm drinking a wine called Mystified. It's got a tree on the label. Well, a, oh, by the way, poor is spelled P-O-U-R. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. You're welcome. Just in case there's any misunderstanding there. Joe. No, no, you got to do it seriously. you got to say it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate that. 
Yeah. That person. That's what I'm here cool. for. Thanks. So this is a soft red blend. It's a 2017 vintage. Soft red blend. A soft red blend. So this is um, one of the um, more expensive wines at three ninety nine a bottle. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah, I know. Stop breaking the, the bank. Bank. Breaking the bank here. Um, here's the fun part: is I went actually on to try and see what this would be retail, and I couldn't find this being sold anywhere else. So <laughs> this might be one exclusive. This could be one of those wines that's relabeled and sold to grocery outlet from like a winery or something like they that. They do like that we, shit, like we discussed. Yes. yes, on the last show, just, just like they do with say, N- like Nikes turning them into pro wings or something. Yeah, yes. or and ones like uh-huh. the what I have on. Well, those are Nikes as well. Yeah, yeah. or or what, what is it? Toyota and something else. Lexus. Lexus, yeah. Hmm. You know, something like that. Or, you know, they take the like the leftovers of... and they relabel them and like put them out. So I couldn't find this. Um, I can find it. It's on Vivino right now. Well, that's just a rating thing, but it doesn't actually have information about selling it. So it's not like it sells it Total Wine or um, any of those other retail Bad stores. Mo. Yeah, it's not anywhere. See, I looked it up on Total Wine right there. Up and down. There we go. Do you and know why I? It's not I, there. Do you want to know why I refuse to ever go There's into a, a Bevmo? I have a weird reason why. Why? Because my ex-wife's name was Beverly, and her drug dealer, who she was having an affair with, was named Mo. You need to get over that. And so every time I see Bevmo, I'm sorry. I'm going to need to interject here. There was actually a real person that you knew that was named Mo. I know. We I, yeah. We both know. I know a couple guys. Yeah, I know. I work with a, a lady named Mo. Her, oh, you know, it's okay. short for Maureen. But um, Aunt, Aunt right, Mo. But not a dude. My my aunt is named Maureen. We call right, but Mo. not a dude. Well, I don't. I, I, and I, we I'm I'm exa- with Mo on the desk. And I, I I'm I'm exaggerating when it comes to never going into a Bevmo. I just I, I don't drink, so I never need to go into one. But I'm just saying that go, go every back. time I go see back. a Bevmo sign, it brings that shit up. There's it always a, it just reminds me. There's go up one more on this. There's uh, one more. The grocery outlet they actually uh-huh. have it listed. So every time I see a Bevmo sign, I'll, I instantly think about my wife sleeping with her drug dealer. Mystified <laughs> Soft Red Blend is back at four ninety nine. This fan favorite wine is sure to fly out the door. Get it while supplies last. Okay, so I paid three ninety nine for this bottle. Because <laughs> it's flying out the door. It's flying out the door so much that they discounted it at a dollar. So here's the thing with this wine. It, it's it's good. I'm not going to say that it's bad. Um it had kind of a metallic taste at first when I first opened it. Here it is right here. Um, with kind of a peppery finish. Mystified. Does it have a does it have a retail cost on there anywhere? Uh, forty nine dollars. No. no, that's free shipping. <laughs> I know. No. Yeah, okay. So I can't find a comparative on it. Um it was very coppery at first and then just kind of not a lot. And then as I let it sit and after I ate a couple of slices of pizza, <laughs> it had kind of a peppery aftertaste, which was pretty good. So I'm gonna guess that this probably has some sort of like cab or zin in it. I don't know what kind of blend it necessarily is. Um, as I wrote here, um, it has a peppery aftertaste. Um, it tastes delicious with stolen pizza. So if you steal pieces of your brother's uh, specially ordered pizza, um, it tastes delicious with that. Bit shallow but drinkable. Um, after you let it sit for a while, it kind of has a pruno front to it. A little bit musty. Why the fuck would you continue to drink something that tasted like copper at first? For the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, okay. So She's wine, devoted. Wine, wine tastes different when you first open it, when it breathes, and when you eat different stuff with it. So that's the tannins thing again, isn't it? That's the damn polyps in the wine. The polyps. The polyps. The polyps. So it, it like it, it, it changes flavor like when it breathes for a while and when it doesn't. So after it breathed for a while, it didn't have that. It had more of a peppery aftertaste, especially with the stolen pizza. And then after a little bit, I was like, I was down here and I was trying to, before we started recording, and I'm trying to like really taste it and see what I can taste. And it was just kind of have like a musty front to it. And so I was like, mm, okay, this isn't too good. And then it, just after a while, I didn't notice it because t- I'm just going to drink this bottle of wine because I paid for it. Um, and then like what I was telling um, everyone is I still have remnants of this cold that I've had for quite some time. And uh, so I have this cold and I have all this snot. That's six. Her sister in law is going to bed, so I have all this this snot still like in my in my mouth, and it's I'm, like I'm the constantly cocaine like drip. clearing yeah. it. Yeah, I'm clearing it and swallowing it, and as I'm clearing it and swallowing, I'm realizing I have this back in slime. my throat of semen, and so <laughs> all I can gather is that this wine tastes mixed like with mucus tastes just like semen. Tastes like dick spit. It's dick spit wine. 
Mr. So Biden for all you spit. cocksuckers out there, uh, this is the wine for you. you. If you, you have mucus, only drink this if you enjoy the back taste of semen. Mystified by Caradine Estate. <laughs> On hashtag wine chat. Hashtag wine chat. <laughs> That's not us, by the way. We're looking that up. I can't even really read this in the back. I'll see what it says. It says it's from California. It's 2017. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Rethink your preconceived notions of a red blend. Ah, uh, bold fruit. It doesn't say anything about semen. It has a soft. S- it has a soft plush texture. <laughs> slight hint of semen. Yeah. So it looks like it may be. It's got a little a, bit of willow tree in it. Uh, the carotene. It's chilled, so it's probably got more like like a petite Syrah or something like that in it. Or someone that worked at the winery uh, dipped a little stick in there. And uh, so that's why it, it, sound, like it? it sounds like it's Caradine Estate in Napa's that makes it. It says stuff. vented and bottled at Mystified Napa, California. Yep, that's this the state right here. It's pretty. So basically, that's whoever these vineyards are. They slap this this different label on it. Correct. Okay. So here we have an example of a rebottled wine that slightly tastes like semen with my phlegm. Right. Cool. So on the bottle, that picture could actually not be a tree. It could actually just be like a splooge, like splatter. So this is another example of a wine found at Grocery Outlet for a very low price that came from, although relabeled, from a really good vineyard and could taste somewhat like semen only if you have a lot of phlegm, um, but actually does have a nice peppery taste with stolen pizza. So if you're going to get pizza... Get yourself a three ninety nine bottle of wine. Yeah. Get mystified with, with stolen mystified. pizza. What do you think? Joe just took a sip of it. You I think? did not take a sip of it because you, you you, I smelled it just to see if the, if you it know. smelled like semen. You're and curious it's, if it smells it's, like it's, semen, it's, aren't you? It's, no, I didn't smell it. I just smelled red wine, but it's it's still in my head. You're thinking semen, and I'm already grossed out at the smell. I'm thinking of willow trees and shit. No, it it doesn't. It didn't taste like semen at first. I'm saying it's with my phlegm. I taste like semen. Well, the, the thought of tasting me. semen still was brought up. And, that, and I that haven't that swallowed semen in a couple of weeks. <laughs> so it's not like it's like fresh. It's not caught in my mucous membranes at all. It's been like two weeks. There you go. So, Ryan, if you're listening, uh, it's time to step up, buddy. Yeah. It's been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple of weeks since <laughs> I've tasted jizz. <laughs> Received it other places, just not in the mouth hole. <laughs> right here, Michael, right in his mouth. Mouthful. He's like ignoring us, trying hey, to like move on to the next thing. Hey, and we're just like, this, mouthful. this is cocktails with Heather. Cocktails. So that's what I got for wine tonight. All right. Okay. What is our drink of the day, Joe? It is the Moscow Mule. It's when a Russian pisses in a copper cup. So popular for good reason. The Moscow Mule is the? one of the most refreshing things to sip on on a hot summer day. Mm. It's suggested vessel, or I'm sorry, vessel. 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 A copper mug. Copper. Also just looks sharp. Two ounces of vodka you throw in there with four to six ounces of ginger beer mm. and 0.5 ounces or half an ounce of lime juice. How much dracar noir do we put in? Oh, Moscow? two dracar. Two and a half bottle. Ugh. Squeeze lime juice into Moscow Mule mug. Add two or three ice cubes. Pour not any more, not any less. One, oh, yes. two, five, sir. Three. Pour <laughs> in the vodka and fill with cold ginger beer. Spray on Drakkar. Stir with penis and serve. <laughs> Drakkar. With Drakkar. Then throw in grenade in shape of Drakkar Noir bottle. Talk about how good. The holy good hand grenade <laughs> of Antioch. How good, how good the linen was to people. Yeah. That actually sounds good with the ginger beer. Actually, that is a fucking delicious drink. It really is. I would have to. I'm going to have to try I could it. drink the fuck out of a Moscow Mule. I'll bet I could. Too. It sounds good. Just it does. because of the ginger beer. Ginger beer makes it really, really good. Right. And some of it's very... What if you, you get put, one that's very gingery and it's very warm. What if you put cream soda in it? Would that taste? Uh, I don't know. Let's try it. Yeah. All right. I don't think the cream would go good with the lime juice, though. It's cream soda, though. It's not actually cream. I, I, I You know what I mean. No. With the taste of the don't. cream soda. No, I don't know what you mean. Fuck you both. That's nothing Fuck to do with you. cream. Have you tried a Moscow mule before? No. Then shush. I can s- shush. I well, can speculate. Shush. As the as the resident alcoholic, <laughs> I can tell you that they're quite delicious. Yes. Yeah. You also like semen and I wine. Even, I, you don't even have to make it in the fucking copper mug. You like four dollar semen wine. I would drink that too. 
<laughs> sure. Shush. I drink the shit out of four dollar semen wine. Call this the semen wine. Se- it's only because I'm flimmy. If you present, I'll drink Moscow Mule. <laughs> you like you like Moscow Mule? In Soviet Russia. Be like Soviet we drink Burrow. mini Moscow Mules. The mule drink you. In Soviet Russia, we like wine. Tastes like copper pennies <laughs> and dick. The copper pennies and dick. <laughs> and oppression. <laughs> and oppression. <laughs> This wine tastes like I have to wait for toilet paper. It don't paper taste for real unless hours. it tastes like propaganda. <laughs> All right. Speaking S- of Stalin propaganda, with hint of iron, we do not drink wine. It's time for porno music. Oh yeah, baby. Hello, Ron. Porno son. <laughs> We've waited so long for this. We're, uh, we're not. We are into the next part. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so in the last time we were here, uh, Wilma was leading Wilma, our, our country folk was yeah, leading Yeah, Mike was away. supposed to intro this shit. What am I supposed well, to because do? This, this, this is the recap. This is just such a, such a jump from the last time that I had to get my head straight. So um, Wilma do led the bitch away. And I had completely forgotten. Wilma and Beth are now hanging out at Wilma's shack because because she's got a Beth current. Beth doesn't have current. Yeah, she ain't got no current. Ain't got no current. But she's got a hamper. And a, yeah. Um, and, and a, a smudge pot or some uh, shit. Somebody's smudging something. <laughs> <laughs> they're so sm- they're smudging against I each other. I had completely forgotten about this portion of it and how it fit in. So here we see we get reminded. I guess I should say that Lonnie and his friends had leapt away from the knot hole <laughs> when Beth and Wilma left the showers, the carefully replacing hole. the whirl of wood Whoa. and Whoa. running Lonnie leading the way back to the Ario. There they crouched in the dark in a tight circle as Lonnie and in an excited whisper began telling them in detail exactly what went on in the shower. He described the women's bodies in detail and surprised himself with an almost total recall of everything said. His friends huddled around him, passing a Sorry, I just interrupted everybody with a cow mask wearing child. That's a little weird. What is the sci fi now? Ah, fucking children of the corn. Get your ass to Mars. Uh, where's oh, his friends huddled around him. He's passing a marijuana cigarette around, Maybe listening to his every word. Hot damn, hot damn, hot pants, man. Damn. Yeah, only they didn't have no pants on. Hot cunts, right, Lonnie? <laughs> mm-hmm. Ha! I knew Mrs. No, Gams. no, no. Ha! Ha! ha. There's no exclamation point. Ha! Ha. I knew Mrs. Ha. Ga- ha. I <laughs> knew Mrs. Gans kind of leaned that way. My sister says she's always putting her hands on her and inviting her in for a back rub. Who's the other one? Who is she, Lonnie? Lonnie took a drag from the cigarette, held his breath while they all waited, and then exhaled in a gush and said, "Don't know. Never saw her before. Stranger." He smiled around at his friends, but I'm sure gonna see more of her. Let's get up to the Gans place and watch us a show. Should have made you just go to the chapter three. You should have, but that's okay. Chapter three. <laughs> Here we go. They had to make a wide circle around the camp to get to Wilma's house. The Gans' home sat away from all the other cottage and <laughs> barracks on a slight rise. The best was thirty percent and fifty. Professor, we're gonna be we're. We're going to be able to uh, do this word for word within the next six weeks. Sure. I still love this song. Me too. I love the intro. It's the best. Mm, yes, dear. <laughs> Bring it back, baby. Bring it back. And Lonnie and his stoned, horny friends didn't want to be seen going in a group up to the house. If they attracted attention, they might spoil the whole thing. They were all flying on the pot <laughs> when they dropped into a drainage ditch and walked along it, skirting the camp. It seemed as if they walked for hours to Lonnie leading the way. It seemed like they had walked clear out of the colony in the ditch. Yet when he stopped and climbed the embankment to look, he still had another hundred yards to go. He had been set tiny a fearful pace. The others panting to keep up with his relentless 
dropped. We're so wasted. Dude, oh my god, this ditch goes forever. He was worried. It seemed like a lot of time had passed since they had left the showers, and he was afraid he was going to miss something. They threaded their way through the field, slowing down and growing cautious as they approached the Gans' house from the rear. Lonnie thanked his luck. Two lights were on in the back of the house, one at either side. A quick check of the first lighted window, and they came and told them it was the kitchen with Wilma moving around fast, taking down two glasses and a whiskey bottle and pouring very generous drinks. Then she turned and walked into the darkness as the boys crouched against the side of the house and crept along toward the other lighted window. They arrived and Lonnie peeked to the window and saw Wilma coming through the door offering Beth one of the glasses. Lonnie looked at Beth lying on the bed, pillows propped under her head, a ridiculous hair dryer on her head. She still had her robe on and Lonnie knew that she looked like, knew what she looked like under it and his teenage penis jerked slightly in his pants. Boing. He had to know who this hot-looking little bitch was. And no matter what, he was going to get his share of her, even if she was just passing through. The boys took turns looking. Lonnie crouched below the window, tapping each one's leg when he thought they'd had enough time, checking out the action in between each looker. When it got good, he would take over. A careful check of the area around him told him it was an ideal spot. A berry bush grew behind them, practically hiding them with its branches, reaching almost to the house over their heads. Inside, there was a table in front of the window with an unlighted lamp on it and a potted fern. That's a detail I did not need to know. It was perfect cover. They could peek into the room from the darkness, peering under the fern and seeing everything. The bed was across the room, and neither of them were facing the window. The one little bedside lamp was perfect to see by. The girl on the bed, the one with the almost perfect features, a kind of dark-haired Grace Kelly, reluctantly accepted the drink, sipped at it, and made a face. Wilma tossed hers off like it was orange juice and laughed at Beth's polite way. Tossed Ah. hers off? She tossed hers off. She made a gesture, holding her nose and tilting her head back. Beth tried to imitate her in a refined way and swallowed half the drink, choking with Wilma, patting her on the back and then stroking her body. Tired. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not tried. It's tired to imitate her in a refined (laughs) way. Swallowed half the drink, choking with Wilma, patting her on the back and then stroking her body. Hey, you're sure not used to this white lightning, (laughs) she said. I guess not, Beth gasped, her eyes running. Drink up. And then I'll give you a massage and you can drop off to sleep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd love that. I don't know if I can finish this, Beth said. Is it whiskey or is it moonshine? Because that needs to be defined here. Um, It is not defined. It could be one or the other, evidently. Whiskey? Because if it's white, if it's moonshine, she's stroking it wrong. Yeah, if they say white lightning, that's fucking moonshine. Yeah. Well, not bourbon. Um, you need to take this up with Wilma. Okay, I'm going to. You you should you should write her an angry I'm, email. I'm going to. I'm going to. Dear strong, Wilma, a strongly worded letter. Dear Wilma, this is not how we do this in this parts. Um, <laughs> holding up, half, I don't know if I can finish this. Beth said, holding up half the glass. She wondered if all Westerners drank moonshine from an ordinary drinking glass filled to the brim. She never had so much straight whiskey at one time before, and she was glad she had come. Come. The house was a delight, neat and clean and colorful, a real Western home. She felt so good and clean and warm, and already she could feel the white lightning spreading through her body, warming and numbing some of her excited nerve endings. Mm. And Wilma, sitting next to her on the bed, tenderly massaging her body, felt so good. She smiled at her, and Wilma blew her a kiss. She wanted to please her and belong to the group, so she raised the glass and said, Down the hatch! and drank the rest, choking it down and catching her breath. Wowee, Wilma said. Honey, honest, it gets smoother and easier as it goes along. She took the glass from Beth and said, How about a refill? A little dividend? (laughs) No, I couldn't drink anymore, honest. I can feel it affecting me already. Wilma was about to coax or bully her into another drink when a high-pitched whistle came from the direction of the kitchen. Beth looked surprised. What's that? 
that's the water I set to boiling, Wilma said, getting up. I'm brewing us some tea to go to bed on. It's a special herb tea folks brew around right here. Relaxes you. It's a roofy tea, isn't it? Roofy oh, colada. Roofy colada. Oh, uh, I'd love right. some tea. Back in a jiffy. Like Don't fall scaling. asleep with that thing on your head. Wilma hurried to the kitchen and turned off the stove, set up a teapot, and took down a box of mistletoe tea. Isn't that poisonous? Mistletoe tea? There was an excited, satisfied grin on her face. It had been a long time, and the last woman she had was Jake Barnes' wife. She had to be careful. If Judd ever found out, she was in trouble. If anybody ever found out, she was in trouble, for there was nothing but small town mines in the camp, and most of the time, they were so bored, they were dying for something to talk about. Everybody knew about Jake Barnes and Tina down at the admissions office. Everybody, including Mrs. Barnes, a cute little Dixie herself. Wilma had been most sympathetic. Oh, Wilma. Now, she thought, she had something great. The best thing she ever had. Yes, she thought, stirring the pot of narcotic tea. Even better than Judd. She was going to give this little city girl a time she wouldn't forget. And maybe it could work into a steady thing. While waiting for the tea to steep, she poured herself a stiff shot of white lightning and gulped it down. Feeling the alcoholic alcohol kick click on a section of her brain in which she felt lewd and alive and excited. Oh! Quickly, she pulled off her panties and hid them in a drawer. Smoothing her dress down, she took the pot of tea in two mugs and hurried back to the bedroom. A quick Where glance. would you hide your panties in a drawer in a kitchen? Um, the the U- the junk uti- drawer, the utensil drawer, um, where you keep the the tongs Forks? and the 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 corn on the cob holders. Towel drawer. Maybe the towel drawer. Tuck between the towels. Paper plate drawer. Tupperware. Tupperware. I'm still thinking junk drawer. Junk drawer's pretty good. It's going to smell like stinky copper. A quick glance at Beth told her the white lining was having its effect. The whiskey was a genuine mountain-grown 110 proof of liquid dynamite. Certainly enough to befuddle a naive little Easterner who'd never had it before. Beth was sitting up and had, with a silly giggle, taken the dryer off her head and her long raven hair tumbled down. She was sitting on the edge of the bed and her robe had fallen open almost to the waist and her long, slender, curving calves and long, well-formed thighs were exposed. You only had one sentence She left. looked up and Wilmus laughed. Wow, am I dizzy. And that's where we're going to leave it. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping you could make it to the end before the next fucking interruption, and it just... Damn it. Yeah, we got to get to that one next time. I know, we're going to start it later, but I like that song so much. I know, that second song is fucking awesome. It is pretty good. All right. I don't think I have any other good stories. Yeah, I think we're good. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what we're at, I think. Well, I've already got another wine to review, so I'll try to buy some more cheap wine. I'll try to have some phone sex on the Bluetooth on the way home. Could you please start Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters? Pole Busters? (laughs) Pole Busters. (laughs) I'm going to research mistletoe tea. Who are you going to call? Butt fuckers. <laughs> I think uh, I'm going to research mistletoe tea. Ghost butter. Oh, God. That, that sounds deadly. I thought it was poisonous. Mistletoe tea. No, oh, Mike's going to look it up for me. I thought mistletoe was poisonous. Is it? 11 amazing benefits of mistletoe. Yeah, oh, it it's can organic. Be. It has the ability to oh, slow the pulse rate, lower blood pressure, and stimulate contractions of the uterus. Oh, that's that sounds like a really bad idea, actually. Do you remember the discussion between uh, Bruce uh, Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle in Batman Returns about mistletoe? No, 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 because it's been like fucking thirty years since I've twenty-seven years or tw- yeah. Anti cancer. Well, see, Wilma's trying to save her. It prevents diabetes. She's trying to prevent her from getting cancer and diabetes. respiratory disorders, so fixing her heart. Yeah. Calms the nervous system. Reduces snoring. Oh my God, I need to start drinking a whole bunch of mistletoe tea. Lowers blood pressure, promotes good sleep, eliminates inflammation, Im- increases immune system activity, reduces snoring, and decreases so menstrual pain. Wilma's really helping her. Yeah. Yeah, she's just God being. Bless Wilma. She's just being a good Samaritan. She's a Thank happy God camper. For Wilma Gans. I help her. Yeah, she's giving her a helping hand. Yeah, yeah. you know, and the, and the rest of the town Hand-balling. doesn't understand. And Hashtag. They never Hand-balling. would understand. No, it's because they ain't from around there. 
It's they don't know what it's like. A broad term. We don't take the foreigners in that kind of place. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know how we wash our strangers in the shower around here. Yeah. It's just a helping hand. Good old yeah. southern hospitality. I'm just going to continue saying that because it's fucking hilarious. Just <laughs> <laughs> helping hand. Hand balling. And I helped. All right. That's all I got. That's all I got. You got anything, Joe? Just, um, just cocktails oot. 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 Okay, then. Good night. Ooh.